Currently, this I am is the one that I hear the most these days. It's just so fun and so addicting to the point that I almost forget about my other collection if I'm only want to listen to music. So hello and welcome to Aftersound Review and this is my review for the latest product from 64 Audio and this is the 64 Audio U4S that costs around $1100 and using a single dynamic driver and three balancer mature. And this I am even though it is not cheap, it's definitely not cheap, it costs a thousand bucks already. But it is actually the cheapest in the universal line, but it turns out to be my favorite currently for all of the 64 audio products and I will tell you why. And just like usual, I will break down this review from the build, fit, frequency, response, sound, and comparison. Just like any other 64 audio universal series, the housing is made of milled aluminum, so yeah, it does feel smooth and high quality, also feels just like a high-end product. Only the faceplate is made of resin with this meteor uh, pattern inside of it. It also has this Apex module, just like any other 64 IMs. And just a little bit of precaution that this IM has a long nose also. Not every ear tips could fit this IM. While the connectors is 2 pin connector and the cable itself is fairly stiff. So it's not uh, actually my preferred kind of cable but nevertheless it still feels kind of good in quality. Now regarding the fit of this IM, let me show you that this IM is a little bit on the bulkier side and also it has a long nozzle here. So when I'm using them, sometimes this area doesn't really touch my ear. So actually the fit is really fine, it's really good, but sometimes the stability is not because when I'm uh, when I'm using them while walking, it could get a little bit swayed here and there because there are. Please note that I have small ears, so this part is not really uh, touching my ears. But if you have bigger problem, bigger ear, I mean, and you can show it deeper in your ears, I think there's no problem for you. Now, before talking about the sound quality of this time, I'd like to share to you about some of its technology that I always like from any other 64 audio products. And it also happens with this IM, first of all, is this Apex module here. So the 64 audio maker finds that the IMs usually have this pneumatic pressure when you're using them for too long and it cause some uh, unhealthiness effect from your for your ears. And this module helps to release that pressure to the point that you can actually choose yourself the level of isolation for your IMs. Here are the modules that I get also from these IMs. So you can pick yourself a minus 20 decibel, minus 15 decibel, minus 12 decibel, and minus 10 decibels. Of course, the less decibel it isolates, it also feels more open, not only about the frequency, but also about the actual physicality on it. So let me show you how this. So this IM is basically like an op open back IM that you could change yourself, that you could decide which kind of module that you need and which how many isolation that you need. Just take a bit of this module and you could see that this IM has this kind of hole. And right now, if you're using them just like this, it will be very open, but it doesn't have base. So yeah, this module helps you to determine determine which kind of base level that you want and which how many level of isolation that you need now the second technology that is also associated with the 64 audio is their tia driver which stands for tubeless in-ear audio that basically means just like its name you know the usual balancer mature has tubes to be used for their crossover also their tuning but for 64 audio especially for the treble section they actually not using the, those kind of tubes, but they actually open it, the balancer material itself, and they say it's giving a smooth but very extended treble. And it happens with all of the 64 audio T and S model for their universal model, and that's exactly what I hear from this time. Those 64 audios has a really good signature, 15 kilohertz uprise in the frequency response that gives those IM, these IMs a lot of airiness and but it still 
regain its smoothness so i really like those uh, technology that only finds in 64 audio like that apex module and also the tia driver so now yeah like i said that you actually have four different kind of modules that you get when you're buying the 64 audio u4s but i need to uh, tell you first that the usual 64 audio comes only with three modules the mx that gives you only minus 10 decibel for isolation and then m15 for 50 minus 15 decibel and then the m20 for the minus 20 decibel but they also give this u4s this golden module here this is the m12 as far as i know it only comes with this u4s right now and you cannot find them anywhere but soon i guess they will release it to buy uh to for you to buy really now let's take a look at the frequency response here now the isolation level definitely gives you a lot of effect especially in the bass region starting from the mx itself minus 10 decibels it's basically makes the bass kind of flat it's kind of neutral ish with just minor bump and then the m12 definitely raising up the bass a lot and then the m15 gives you even more bass and then the m20 even though at least for my uh for my rig it measures the same but because you got more isolation it does give more kind of reverb or this kind of bloatedness that I get from when I'm hearing the M20 so it's not only about the frequency response but it also affects the openness for example when I'm hearing the changing the M15 to MX it's not only about the bass that is really really toned down but it gains a lot of airiness when you're hearing it it's not again it's not only about the frequency but it's the sense the sense of uh, music when you're hearing them you can definitely hear more better what happens around you because basically it only isolating minus 10 decibel so the modules here affects a lot with, with the im sound not only about the bass but also isolation and the atmosphere that you get when you're hearing this uh this im but if you ask me which modules do i use the most uh, well it is the m15 and also the m12 well i need to share with you the m15 for me sounds the best if you want uh the best bass from this im it gives you a really good sub bass and good rumble the m12 basically toned down the bass volume to the point that it sounds more tame it doesn't have that similar sub bass but it's more mid bassy i would say i don't really get that sub bass slam in the m12 but you do get much more forward mid range so yeah those two kind of modules that i use the most now starting from the bass area i would say that this i am is by the way i'm using the m15 module here because i what I perceive when I'm changing the module, this M15 releasing the best potential out of the base driver from this IM. Using the M15, this kind of driver is really special for me. It's thumping, it's big, it's really punchy and also have this kind of uh, rumble to it that is almost feels like it has a physicality in it. And this kind of base, I don't really get that in any other thousand bucks IM that I've ever tried. Yeah, really, it kind of, you know, the base, it's absolutely looks coming from the below. So, yeah, I do get this kind of doom when I'm hearing some orchestral music or movie soundtracks that, I don't know, it's just really different. In any other IMs, hybrid drivers that I ever tried, I don't really get this kind of physicality coming from below sensation but this IM can give me that and for me that gives a really different atmosphere to any of my songs that i've ever tried to the point that when i re-listen again to my some of my old favorite songs it just gives me a different sensation different vibes that is so fresh for me but this kind of a bass is actually a 64 kind of bass so when you have heard 64 audio neo or 64 audio trio it's a similar kind of bass so if you have tried that i can i hope you could relate with that but if you haven't tried the 64 kind of bass well this is different let me tell you this is different 
honestly this is not the tightest kind of bass also this is not the most fast kind of bass but the slam texture and rumble and just like the physicality of it it's so different to the point that i will i will say that this is special this is a special kind of bass that i really like now going to the mid-range section well the changing the modules will give you for less uh, isolation will give you more forward mid-range but basically the mid-range texture and tonality is almost the same with all of these modules the mid-range is basically very smooth it's of it's body it has body on it so it's a little bit warmer kind of mid-range it's a little bit subdued also compared to the bass so it's maybe gives you a kind of u-shaped ish presentation but the vocal is so smooth you can see in the frequency response itself it has an early gain around 2k but after that a little bit of dip for around 3k but after that it gains a little bit around 4k so it's also somehow preserving some kind of vocal edge to it it's not exactly totally smooth but it still regains its energy for screaming in some parts and also for some uh, vocalist that needs to be screaming in their part of the music for example like refrain it still gains the power so it's not exactly boring or anything like that it's just really really smooth and bodied so but the thing is the mid-range of this time isn't exactly the clearer the clearest mid-range i've ever tried for a thousand bucks so if you're looking for a very forward and clear mid-range this is not for you this is a very safe mid-range but it's just a little bit backward in positioning compared to, to the bass and treble now just like i have ever said in the beginning of this video this im has a ti driver for its treble section now the thing is i really like this kind of treble even though it's not linearly extended it's basically a little bit forward in the mid treble section 7 to 10k ish it's still basically a little bit linear in those frequency but after that it gains a dip lower dip and after that raising again what happens in this im is a very smooth but also forward treble but it's really really airy it's like the it doesn't have any any wall to to limit the presentation of the treble itself it's really open up there so it's not the most crisp treble but it's have this kind of airy sensation on it and yeah i somehow really like it listening to lindsay sterling and also some classical music definitely not the crispest i mean if i'm comparing them with the sennheiser i600 the sennheiser i600 has better impact and bite for violent music but the sense of openness here the sense of airiness i get that in this 64 audio u4s better even though it is smoother so it's special for me it is open it is nicely extended but it's not harsh in any way and i have never heard any kind of metallic tinge to it or any sibilance or harshness from this im now simply say this im gives me a very atmospheric sensation because i get a very thumping rumbling kind of bass that has this sense of physicality on it and then a very smooth mid-range that kind of sounds in the center of the stage and then i get this rumbling bass coming from below but i get also an open stage with that kind of tribal presentation it's definitely not harsh but it gives an open sensation to it so i really like what they have done with this im in terms of tonality and also that atmospheric sensation it gives a really different kind of sensation even when i'm comparing them with my uh, sony irm9 on sir ie600 it's just more stage like at this for me the bass looks coming feels like it's coming from below the mid-range is still in the middle but after that you get an open sensation in the upper region but i have to be honest with you in terms of technicality this is not the most groundbreaking or simply it is not the best i mean at a thousand bucks if i compare them with the monarch mark ii or even my sony irm9 in terms of the focus of the music maybe because this im has a really rumbling kind of bass in some music it doesn't have a very tight and very focused kind of bass make also the vocal is really smooth really smooth with that open airy sensation it somehow kind of 
a little bit blurring the imaging of this. I am at least when I'm comparing them with the Monarch Mark II or Sen, uh, or this Sony IRM9, I get better imaging, also better focus in pinpointing some instruments, also a little bit clearer mid range, I would say. So if you're looking for something that is really detailed and really forward in those kind of resolution, I don't think you could get them from this IM because this IM is so smooth and atmospheric and that kind of immersiveness for the atmospheric sensation, I feel that it's kind of blurring the sensation of pinpointing some instruments here and there. Uh, but the thing is, when I'm using them, not gonna lie, because of that kind of atmospheric sensation I get from this IM, also that physicality of the bass and treble, I sometimes kind of forget uh, how my Sony IRM9 has better uh, details and better resolution a bit compared to this IM. It's just more fun and more engaging kind of sound. Now let me compare them with one of the most popular choice around this price point which is the Monarch Mark II. Let me say that I'm one of the few people that actually doesn't really like the Monarch Mark II. First of all, it's because of its fitting. It's just crazy big for my small ears. And then the sound for me is even though I would say that the Monarch Mark II is more resolving and more detailed overall, but it's kind of focusing too much on the mid-range for me at least when i'm hearing some disney music or orchestral music i don't really get this kind of atmospheric sensation that gives me that wow majestic effect so the, to the point that yeah because my playlists are mostly disney and orchestral i don't really like the monarch mark too but if you like some things that is more mid-range forward with better focal clarity with maybe more tighter bass presentation, the Monarch Mark II is for you. But if you happens to be like me, I really like my dynamic bass to be rumbling and majestic and also ha have more uh, treble presentation. Well, this U4S for me serves my playlist much better. So yeah, it really best depends on what is your preference, at least for my preference. I definitely prefer the U4S much, much more. Now, how is it compared to one of my all-time favorite IMs like this Sony IRM9? Well, the Sony IRM9 actually still have one of the best imaging in terms of pinpointing some instrument position that I've ever tried from any other IMs. And it still happens with this when I'm hearing them both. When I'm hearing the Sony IRM9, it's most like I'm uh, in a more closed space because of course because of its isolation uh, too but in that closed space I get more channel for uh, for the speaker system like when I'm hearing some instrumental it's coming from here coming from here and then coming from here I could pinpoint better in this Sony IRM9 M9 better than the U4S but the Sony IRM9 is noticeably much more boring i would say the bass doesn't as doesn't give as punch as the u4s it doesn't rumbling as good as this u4s also also there's somehow i feel some restrained uh mid-range and treble area and this for me even though it's not bad but when i'm comparing the sony irm9 to the u4s that is really energetic the M9 somehow feels kind of restrained in the energy regarding the mid-range and also treble section. Even though I'm not saying that this is lacking uh, extension or anything like that. It's just more boring overall. But I still love the mood. It's just uh, for my... These days, I just prefer a more exciting sign, a more exciting song from the U4S. Now, comparing them with another... My all-time favorite iron like the Sennheiser i600. Well, the Sennheiser i600 is one of my, uh, you know, I really have a tendency to have one favorite dynamic driver, and that happens with this right now. I my favorite dynamic driver right now is the Sennheiser i600. Compared to the U4S, it's definitely more coherent because it's only have one driver. Yeah, that's why I always have one uh, dynamic driver IMs. I like coherency also and the resolution of the i600 is just crazy good. 
but it sounds so small in terms of soundstage and imaging. So actually when I'm hearing some note definition in some orchestral music or simply a lot of music, I could hear better and clearer notes in the Sennheiser ISK sounded because of its really good resolution, impact, and note definition. It's somehow better in the Sennheiser i600 also it sounds tighter compared to the U4S but in terms of separation soundstage and imaging this U4S is much more immersive and more rumbling it gives you better presentation of the energy also the build up energy when I'm hearing some EDMs or any bassy or yeah, majestic kind of songs. The U4S is simply much more immersive in presentation, while the Sennheiser i600 is much more, I would say, tighter but also closed and smaller in comparison. Also, the Sennheiser i600 is more prone to sibilance and some harshness. Well, also, some might say, why did I say that I like this 64 audio the most? Well, simply state that my preference in tonality, well, I'm more of a tonal guy rather than technical guy. So my preference for tonality is definitely, first of all, I need to have a base for uh, using dynamic driver for the bass section but my preference tonality for the 64 audio is basically the U12T but I imagine it to have a dynamic driver bass and also lift a bit around its treble section for more excitement and that's exactly what happens with this U4S I get bass dynamic for the for the bass and then I'll also get a little bit uplift in the treble section but basically similar ish for the mid range but yeah the yeah, utelfe is just more layered and more detailed but in terms of tonality this is what I've been looking for so at the end of the day I wouldn't say this IM is perfect of course at this price point I think it lacks some clarity and resolution especially in the mid-range area. I wouldn't say it's bad though, but at least comparing it with its competitors, it's not the most resolving IM for a thousand bucks. But it gains one of a very unique thing that I would say that I find at this price point. It still sounds balanced but very immersive with that open treble and those rumbling kind of bass. So to the point that I really don't care about those resolution thingies. It's just so fun and yeah, so enjoyable to the point that yeah, this is my main IM for these days. So I think that's all I could say about this IM. Uh, if you have any question, please write down in the comment below. And this is my final score for its tonality and also technical. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.